Yo, what's up, everybody? It's Deez Roy. I got a reaction. I'm about to react. Comedian Ralph Barbarossa. Uh, I think I did this about earlier this year when he did a stand up. Man, he made me laugh. I, I think I did two or three reactions with him. And I guess he has a new um, stand up right there on Netflix. So I'm probably going to check it out, man. That dude is hilarious, man. But um, before it does all the. I'm, I'm, about, to, I'm about to do the clips to reaction but i guess there is a short little six minutes of his life because he does talks about his uncles was drug dealers and everything with cartels or something like that so they they're gonna say his his uh dark past and he's gonna talk about it or i guess they're gonna they put a clip all together so it has to be interesting to hear about it so let's go straight into it man Let's see, man. Oh, man. All right. Three? Huh? Uh. I was like, hey, what's up? What are you drinking? She was like, a crown and coke. I was like, nice. <laughs> that was as far as I could afford to go. But then I told myself, I shouldn't overthink it. So I was like, you know what? I'm going to go for it. And I said, could you buy me one too, please? I'm Ralph Barbosa. Thank you guys so much. I'm only here because I'm a loser in in my world. And my uncle, my mom's brother, got my dad into they were they were drug dealers. Like sold like all sorts of drugs. My uncle was like a right hand man for, for like a cartel in Mexico. Oh really? shit. Yeah. The multi billion dollar industry of narco trafficking is one of Mexico's biggest Damn, he's a he he knows that about that life there, yeah. Snap. I bet you that his uncle, his dad, and everybody probably did that so he was not in it. But at the same time, he seen it, though, you know? Like, when you think about, like, all the other ones. Oh, you do see their their sons and everything. I'm tripping, though. But, you know, let's go. Keep going. We were, like, spoiled. No matter where we lived, we yeah. were always, like, so taken care of. I, I had, like, all the video games. I had, like, so much clothes. Like, my uncle had a Corvette, a BMW, like... Well, I'm telling you, we, we lived like kings. But when that all came to an end, a, a fucking sad-ass end, uh, my dad started remodeling houses. And he would also paint cars because he had a body shop for him. <clears throat> and one day, like four years after he had quit, uh, he was like running a job site and like agents, federal agents just showed up and were like, yeah, Yo, you're under arrest. You know, I was still a kid when they got caught up with that stuff. And it, it really did traumatize my family a lot. So... I remember trying to sell weed for like three weeks. When I when I was <laughs> three weeks, <laughs> at least it's be honest. <laughs> oh man, at least it's be honest. Selling weed for three weeks, shit. I mean, <laughs> he tried. <laughs> Fresh out of high school, I think this is like right before I, I even tried my first open mic. My, my cousin, like my my uncle's oldest son, who's like my big brother, with her. You know, he's he's always been in and out of street shit too you know yeah, yeah. at this time he's he's into some some street shit I, I i went with him one time he was like picking up like like a pound of weed from this dude i was like yo do you think that he would sell me some or like through you or something you know what i mean and he's just like my cousin was just like man are you serious like i was like yeah was like just give me a little bit i think i, I think i could sell something you know I mean? and for like a good two three weeks I think I made him a lot of money. Like, I was surprised at how many people would just buy weed from me. And I was just like, oh, I'm going to stop. After three weeks, I was like, I'm good. And he was like, why? I was just like, I feel like I'm not going to want to learn a skill if I keep doing this. Like, And this is right when my uncle and my dad had, like, literally four months ago had just, their, their trial's done. They just turned themselves into the prisons they're going to. Like, mm. you know, people on my mom's side. Yeah, that makes that makes sense a lot, man. Shout out for that, though. Hey, for real, it's fast money. I was talking to, I mean, I'll talk to some other stuff later right there, but fast money. But it's a big, big gamble, man, because you're going to make this quick money and everything is good. And then one day feds got you or somebody got you and get killed or your family got killed or your friends or this and this and that and then you have to be paranoid the whole damn time and you can't go out this way and that way and all that kind of stuff and 
boo boo and hack of things right there man so they're in prison hell yeah. or have already been killed my dad's in prison like what if i end up in jail and like if i get caught even even with just like even if i just got caught with some small time shit i know my family is going to be real like devastated and shit you know what i mean every male is in prison like what the fuck you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah so i was just like nah i shouldn't do it when drug dealers call you from prison they always ask the same question they're always like who would have thought i go from driving the bends to sleeping in a cell <laughs> Everybody. <laughs> That's why we asked you to like stop. being real, though. <laughs> I'm like the Corky Romano, Brother Fredo, like dumbass. Like the fact that comedy's working out for me now. Now they're just like, yo, good job, Ralphie. But like for the longest, they're just like fucking moron. But I don't think yeah. I'm the one guy in my family who like finished high school, and they're just like, he's a pussy. Like they, yeah. my my grandpa had like a like. Uh, a job and doing like sheetrock and stuff yeah. like he's probably the one guy in our whole family who had like <laughs> a job yeah. yeah my my parents were born here but i was raised by my grandparents my mom was living with us and then she moved out i stayed at my grandma's i lived with my mom for a while too and she was cool she never really kept my dad around but she always kept father figures around <laughs> now i have brothers and sisters but they're way younger than me for a long time i was just by myself damn damn i want to go back <laughs> what's up she never really kept my dad around, but she always kept father figures around. Now, I have brothers and sisters, but they're way younger than me. For a long time, I was just by myself. My grandmother, who raised me, she's a huge fan of comedy. If you would have told her that one day I'd be here on The Tonight Show with Jimmy Fallon, she probably would have said, que, because she doesn't know English. <laughs> I had, like, all sorts of different jobs. I think when I was 12, I had my first job. I was washing dishes at a Marisco's restaurant. I also was a barber. I was painting cars for a long time. My, my dad ran a body shop. Yeah. His younger brother, my uncle, worked there for like years and like learned, taught himself how to paint and shit, and he yeah. taught me. I've been going out to eat by myself lately, but I'll take my notebook with me so I can write little joke ideas. And I noticed like in different parts of town, sometimes people will try to guess what I'm writing in the notebook. Like whenever I'm in hood type areas, people are usually like, oh, he's writing raps. <laughs> <laughs> but whenever I'm in like, a nice uptown Starbucks, then people are like, ah, oh, he's writing raps. <laughs> I was nine years old when I found oh, yeah. my, my uncle's DVD. Hey, man, you can't lie. His his punchline or his like, duh, 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 psh, when he's going to say his, yeah, his punchline or whatever he's going to do with them when it comes out, it's so simple, but it makes you just make you laugh. It's just react about it. The way he said it, though, it's freaking hilarious that's why it's good because if somebody else that's the way he says it it wouldn't be that funny if you think about it but the way he says it i think that's why it's funny <laughs> Deal. to me man hey shout out to him man oh yeah Chappelle shows my uncle who i'm telling you is a fucking huge comedy fan he loves yeah, comedy. It, it's kind of like Chappelle, if you think about it because i mean Chappelle is funny he's funny too but it's it's the way they say it because the way he talks about some things that you know it's not really funny you know but they Chappelle, there's some stuff he talked about political stuff other other people talk about it we'd be like boo you know but he talks about the way he talks about it like Dave Chappelle, it's hilarious though and, and you see him when he's talking about that kind of things it's hilarious too you know the way how you can just let it out about it, man. That's why you can see a great comedian that kind of way. It's going to be there for a, a while. Yeah. So he always had, like, the Chappelle show uh -huh. on DVD. Yeah. And um, Hell yeah. He, like, left one at my grandma's house one time. And I was, I kill I was you. like... I kill you. <laughs> I don't know, man. Like, nine or something? Yeah. So I started watching it, you know. Man. Hey, shout out to Chappelle right there. I missed that. Hey, when I used to go to school, I'm talking about I'm, like, middle school. We used to talk after when the new shows that came out, uh, episode that came out, we used to all talk about it the whole week into the next week, until the next week. And then we always talk about the all the time. That's, um, what's his name? That's right there. That's the, uh, the crackhead dude. Big M's, I forgot. I mean, I, I'm trying to remember his head, his name now, right now, man. I'm tripping, man. I'm gonna get kind of like irritated in my head now. But you have all those, all those characters are freaking hilarious. That's fun. I was like bringing all my friends over to watch Chappelle's show and yeah. shit. And... Yeah. I 
I'm Rick James. I'm Rick James. <laughs> Man, he killed it. Enjoy yourself. And then one day flipping through the channels on Comedy Central, because sometimes I'd catch it on, on TV. Yeah, 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 yeah. One day he came on, and I was just like, oh, shit, Chappelle oh, Show. Oh, man. But was, that's right there in San Francisco right there. Oh, man, that's freaking hilarious, man. That one is underrated. People don't really talk about it. They talk about Killing Me Softly, Slightly, but I think that one's freaking hilarious. I just kept talking, and I was yeah. just like, yo, when's he going to do skits? What the fuck? Yeah, 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 yeah. But then I just kept watching it, and I was just like, oh, shit. It's just like stand-up comedy, like. Uh, and I've seen it here and there, like on movies or whatever. Right? Yeah. But I'm just like, oh shit, like he's a stand up comedian. Yeah. And like then I got it. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. But yeah, I was probably the first ever person I ever saw doing stand up. Yeah. I also grew up in big shit talking environments. Like I grew up at the barbershop where it's just, it's not even funny anymore. It's just shit talking, shit talking. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like my, my family's like that. I'm telling you, I was like the dumbass of the family. They're like Tip. always shitting on me. I got like my suburban friends too, but they're like college kid, preppy type people, very cocky. Like they can never answer questions by saying yes or no. They always got to say stuff like, you know me, that's weird. <laughs> that is the strangest way to answer a question. Let's talk to my buddy James. I was like, yo, James, a couple weeks ago, we were hanging out at that bar and you seem to hit it off with that one girl. And I've been meaning to ask you, uh, did you two go home together? He was like, Ralph, you know me, you know me. <laughs> I was like, dude, she's been missing for like 13 days. Oh, sheesh. I don't know you at all. <laughs> Where did you Damn, that's, see the way he said it though, though, man. This like, <laughs> oh man, dude, that's the way how you can say it though. It's all about the punch with it though. Like, man, that's. You start doing stand-up comedy at? In Dallas, uh, at Backdoor Comedy. The little, it's a little, it's a tiny little spot. It's run by this lady named Linda Stogner. She's really funny, real nice lady. That right there, you can only perform clean at, at, at their shows, at their open mic. Mm. It's clean, and I started doing the open mic, and she started letting me like host or whatever on weekends. It's cool. She used to give me a lot of stage time. I love comedy so much that if I was doing sold out clubs or if I even got to do like, you know, some theaters one day. Uh, I'll go it, see. It make no difference to me to go from that to doing like the local clubs again for free. Like, yeah, I love the craft. I love I love comedy in yeah. general. And that's basically what Dave Chappelle does, man. That's what he does. You you see about the Dave Chappelle? Now sometimes he just he just has his stage and he has his his tour bus and then he just travels and does his stuff. And I guess if he needs money, he might he will do it right there into a. A small place for maybe do like a quick fast flip like a a big crowd or a cool crowd but then maybe he does all his jokes and goes right there into a smaller one just come up over there and just try to do his craft if, if that joke works or not and that's kind of like what he's gonna do then man i'm telling you, man he's gonna be it's gonna get better and better but man he's hilarious though shout out man but yeah that life is about that he's seen it so man that's what's up though but hey man um if you see people that i mean you grew up and you see people that's about that life or sell drugs or all that kind of stuff you know but you you have money it's a big gamble like i'm talking about earlier you know like i know people that some stuff like that too and the only thing about it is like people get locked up or you gotta know the right time to get out, man, because that's a lot of a big wrist every single damn day. Alright? Cause you might get murked, you might get all that stuff. But yeah, man, so shout out to him again though, man. So uh I'm I'm gonna watch that new one right there on Netflix right there. So yeah, I bet you it's probably hilarious. I wanna watch with somebody though. But alright, man. Hit me in the comments, man. Like, subscribe, show love. All right, man. Peace.